Full circle of a guide dog, birth to retirement. A woman walks with a black lab. I was never ever a good white cane user. I used to carry it and hate it. BC and Alberta Guide Dogs presents Rosamund and Guide Dog Rory Hike a Forest Trail. The first time I um, came back with my first guide dog, I remember the confidence that, that she gives me to go the speed I want and to avoid all the obstacles and feel confident that I'm not going to hit anything. A white cane can't do that for you. Birth to retirement, full circle of a guide dog. Yellow Labrador Retrievers wear blue vests. BC and Alberta Guide Dogs is a nonprofit organization that breeds, raises, and professionally trains guide dogs for individuals who are blind, visually impaired, and autism support dogs for children with moderate to profound autism. It takes two years and upwards of $35,000 to produce one certified dog, provided free of charge to the recipient. The organization was founded in 1996 as British Columbia Guide Dog Services, becoming fully accredited members of the International Guide Dog Federation in 2001. In 2002, the organization expanded into Alberta and in 2008 launched its sister charity, Autism Support Dogs, and became members of Assistant Dogs International. In 2014, the two charities amalgamated to form one organization collectively known as BC and Alberta Guide Dogs. A yellow lab gives birth. A puppy emerges encased in a clear amniotic sac. An assistant clears the puppy's face. It all starts with this beautiful moment. With the help of volunteer whelpers who raise the litter of pups until they're about seven weeks old and the BC and Alberta Guide Dogs Director of Breeding, the journey begins. The mother dog licks her newborn. Later, the pup snuggles into her mother's fur and nurses. Wendy Kaywood, volunteer breeding stockholder and whelper. For the first three weeks, the mom does much of the work. Once all the puppies have been born and cleaned off and they're all nursing, she, she cleans them, she, she licks them, she stimulates them to make sure that they, they continue to breathe. And so the main responsibility is to make sure that there isn't a puppy underneath her because at this stage they're too small uh, to wiggle out. The mother dog nuzzles seven pups. Our volunteer whelpers help deliver the puppies. Then the mum becomes the number one priority. If they can keep the mum happy, fed, clean, dry, and stress-free, then she'll take care of her little pups. At three weeks, they're introduced to real food, and mum can take a back seat. The pups start to tend for themselves, and the race is on. A litter of puppies eats food and clambers around their mother. By about five weeks, mum has almost had enough of her little ones. Now it's time for them to learn some manners. A pup paws and nips at their mother's face. She reclines on a blanket and gently bites the puppy's leg. Meanwhile, a black pup chews on the edge of a food bowl. While other puppies nap nearby. As the puppies are growing in size, their personalities start to come out and it's, it's great fun to watch. Some of them are very adventuresome and they will scoot around the whelping pen and climb over the mum and climb over each other, climb over stuffy toys. When they're in the larger pen, that's when the fun really starts because they have more toys, they have the kennels of the crates overturned so they can learn how to climb. And it's really interesting to watch how, who become the independent ones who are the ones that, that pick on the others? There's usually one or two that um, are always causing the ruckus. So when, when there's a great deal of squabbling going on, you know that there's one or two dogs in the middle of it. A pup tugs on the long fluffy arm of a stuffed monkey toy. She drags it across the floor. At seven weeks of age, puppies are ready to be introduced to their volunteer puppy trainers, and it's time to say goodbye for the first time. In terms of emotion, by the time the puppies are about six weeks old, 
They're starting to form a pack. They have no manners. They have definitely moved into a different stage. So although I feel a definite attachment to them, uh, I'm actually really happy to see them go out the front door with their puppy raisers because it, it's appropriate. It, it's time for them to do that. A senior couple approaches a home. A woman answers the door. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Come on in. She ushers them inside and closes the door. Excited volunteer puppy trainers arrive to meet their pup and start their new adventure together. They get a chance to meet the mum and litter mates and other puppy trainers before setting off. These dedicated volunteers open up their homes and hearts to these very special pups. Their job is to provide a safe, loving home and to teach them basic obedience and socialization skills with the help of a BC and Alberta Guide Dogs puppy training supervisor. Volunteer Bev Bullock. One of the big challenges in puppy raising is ensuring that you cover all the bases that, that we read in the manual and try and not rush into things too much. Let them be a, a puppy for, for some time. It does change your life because it's 24-7. It's like having a newborn. And um, we've, but we've adjusted because we've had puppies here before. So this is our fourth puppy that we, we've raised through BC Guide Dogs. And just to have uh, this little puppy bouncing through our, our family room, kitchen, laundry room area is just so much fun. Volunteers and dogs gather in a parking lot. Basic obedience classes start at 10 weeks of age and are the foundation of a successful working dog. The pup's job at this point is to eat, sleep, train, repeat. The hardest part is learning these new talents with all your buddies watching you. The use of marking and rewarding specific behaviors with food is a way to any dog's heart. This technique starts immediately and continues throughout their training. A man leads his dog down a set of stairs. When you first start puppy raising, when you get your dog initially, you're just, they're just a puppy. But then as you go along a few months into the program, you realize what it is all about. And you truly um, are excited about it, the dog's future. As long as you can focus on the program and what it's all about and how you're gonna make a difference in someone's life, then you shouldn't miss them, but you, genu you, you genuinely do, for sure. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to say goodbye to them, but we learned with, with all of them that they went to great borders and they fit very nicely into the new family and very quickly, as a matter of fact. Once the puppies reach 16 to 18 months, they move in with volunteer boarding families in South Delta. These families continue to love and care for these special college students as they start advanced training to become a guide dog or autism support dog. The dogs are picked up by BC and Alberta Guide Dog Certified Instructors Monday to Friday who teach them the fine art of becoming a service dog. Ashley Clark. The first thing that I do when a dog comes from um, puppy raising into advanced training is I try and build a connection with the dog. So I really want that dog to see me as um, his friend, his ally, somebody that he's going to enjoy working with day in and day out. I want him to um, have a high degree of willingness to work with me. I want him to really think that I'm fun and he wants to do this every day. In advanced training, basic skills are reviewed, adding more responsibility for the dog and a guide dog harness is introduced. The instructors continues to see food reward payoff. It's used to enhance skills that will benefit a visually impaired individual. By using obstacles, instructors start to teach the dog how to navigate their surroundings. This takes a lot of time and patience. We start by showing them the skills that we want them to learn. So we very much guide them through the actions that they need to, to learn. Um, when we start to see them showing some understanding of those actions, doing things on their own, anticipating a little bit what we want, um, then we start to decrease our support. So slowly over time we expect more from the dog, less from the handler, ultimately working up to the end goal of a dog that can take full responsibility for all those guiding skills. So it's not just about being a mobility aid, it's not just about helping someone walk down the street, it's also about giving that person some confidence to do things that they might be 
nervous to tackle otherwise. A dog hits a practice traffic signal with his nose and is rewarded by a trainer. Ashley leads a dog along the harbor front. Gripping the trainee's harness, they stride side by side down a park trail. Another pair travel along a wide brick path. Rory, a black lab, stands in the back of a van. A volunteer leashes him and they approach a house. Advanced training is completed in approximately 20 weeks, depending on each dog's individual needs. Then comes the day when the dogs are carefully matched with the recipient and the instructor then brings the dog to meet its new handler. The guide dog recipient and dog will complete a rigorous three-week training program with their instructor before they become a working team. Rosamund Van Leeuwen. I better leave a little bit of extra time because I'm one of these people who likes to use every minute that I've got. So if I've got an extra five minutes, I'll use five minutes doing something at home and then, then I'm late and I've got to catch a bus. So we have to go fast down the hill. So I have to realize that this is a new dog. I'm a new person for the dog. And so I'd better leave some extra time just in case um, we have a little problem. But I don't really anticipate any problems. Rosamund leaves her home with Rory. The three-week formal program covers the entire spectrum of training and care of the dog. Training includes working the dog in harness and learning and reviewing common routes, public transit, public buildings, shopping malls, obstacles, safely crossing streets, and anything else in particular the client needs to be set up for success. Janie is about to retire. She's 11 years old now. Um, normally the dogs retire when they're about 10, but she's been a wonderful dog. She's in really good shape still. And so I've, we've been lucky enough to work together for one more year. Um, she's about to retire and I'm going to keep her as a pet. Uh, this is the first time that I've actually kept one of my working dogs. Um, it hasn't always been as convenient in my life to have two dogs because I've been out and about a lot. and. I didn't want to leave a dog at home by itself when it's been used to being with me. But um, now I'm, I am home more, and uh, so hopefully I'll be able to take them both out just when I'm walking. Um, the new one obviously will be my working dog, and so when I'm on errands and missions, I'll just have the one with me, and Janie will be home. Rosamund and Rory explore a shopping mall with a trainer. They exit an elevator, stroll through the concourse. Rosamund smiles as she and Rory ride up an escalator. Later, they walk along a downtown sidewalk as cars cruise past on the road. The trainer trails behind them as they return to Rosamund's street. On a rainy day, a man and woman approach Rosamund's home with a bouquet of flowers. Rory and Janie greet them at the door. Then they join Rosamund in the living room. On occasion, the puppy trainers may have the privilege of meeting the recipient of the guide dog that they raised as a pup. The man sits with Rosamund. Rosamund, uh, it, it gives Jill and I enormous pleasure to see uh, um, Rory come across to you and, and to graduate. Uh, we're very proud of her uh, and we're delighted to see her go on to the next phase of her life and indeed to see her working. Um, it's been a great pleasure. Good luck. <coughs> Thank you. They shake hands. Rory gnaws a bone nearby. Mark Northcote. For us to see Rory with Rosemont today was great because it was obvious from Rory's uh, demeanor that she wasn't our dog. She was actually Rosemont's dog and we could see the way that they were interacting together uh, dogs got on well. Uh, it's obvious that, uh, that Rory really loves Rosemont, so uh, for us it's, it's just a great, a great feeling to see that. By graduation, the story has come full circle. Life returns to the new norm. This could not happen without all of our dedicated staff, volunteer whelpers, breeding stockholders, puppy trainers, boarders, and of course, donors. For the new guide dog handler, these working dogs give independence and confidence to go out into the world as they wouldn't have been able to before. 
For me, the most satisfying part of being involved with BC Guide Dogs is watching the goofy little puppies, whether it's been one I've raised or one I, that has been born in my kitchen, become a beautiful, well-trained dog, confidently lead their owner down the street, or if a puppy becomes an autism support dog, re recognizing what a change it means to a child with autism and to his or her whole family. Uh, that, that is so satisfying. Rosamund walks a trail with Rory. Those feelings and any sadness that I have um, surrounding the dog leaving me come from a kind of selfish place and, and that's all right because in the end, um, those feelings turn into fulfillment and satisfaction. You know, whatever heartache that I might endure, you know, being attached to a dog and having to see it move on to, to go be with somebody else, means that I've done my job, means the puppy raisers have done their job, the organization has fulfilled its commitment to blind people in the community, and, um, and we've changed somebody's life, which is a pretty big deal. You really concentrate on what you're doing for, for part of society, just helping someone in your community that need your help. And so that's why we're doing it, because we know that, and we keep in touch with with one of the the owners of our of one of our puppies and we know what a difference it's made in her life. She's truly grateful for what we've done and keeps in touch on a regular basis. So that's it really important to us. Rosamund walks on the side of a road with Janie and Rory. She confidently walks a dirt path with Janie on a leash on her right and Rory in harness on her left. Rosamund smiles. Producer director William Thornton. Narrator Kirk Dixon. Word to mouth voiceover imaging. Special thanks to Jamie Arnup, Beverly and Rupert Bullock, Wendy Kaywood, Ashley Clark, Laura Hilbert, Rosamund Van Leeuwen, Mark and Jillian Northcote, Bonnie Stroy, Nick Tony, Henny Vanderloo, Sylvie Faquette, and Accessible Media Inc. Lori Marty Smith, graphic designer. Thanks to all the people and dogs who participated in the making of this film. BC and Alberta Guide Dogs.